Tuesday Tips Live from uh, me, Phil, here in the Digital DJ Tips studio. Now, as you can tell, we're not in the studio at all because it's uh, it's midterm and I've spent uh, the last week in Amsterdam at the ADE Amsterdam dance event. So I'm taking what I'm considering to be some, uh, some well-earned time off. But that does not mean that we don't have a Tuesday Tips this week because I wanted to give you the debrief on ADE. So uh, the first thing I need you to tell me in the comments, if you can, is uh, that you can hear me okay, because as you can tell, we just press go live on the laptop. I've got no idea if the audio is coming through, if you can see me okay. So please let me know uh, that you can see me okay. And until I get some chat in that chat box saying, yep, Phil, we can hear you okay, uh, I will not assume anything. Uh, so uh, a few people are already in there, so that's good. Hello, Paul, who says we missed you last week. Listen, if you're new to this, we normally have a show at this point. We're normally already bang into talking about a DJ piece of equipment or a technique or something. Now, it's a bit different this week. It's just kicking back in my garden here in uh, in the south of Spain. We're over the border from Gibraltar, where we normally are, and we are just chatting DJing. Or more to the point, we're chatting the Amsterdam dance event. Um, so as I say, there's no other live streams this week. We're on, on the half-term break here at Digital DJ Tips, but this is all fresh in my mind. So before it all drifts away, as uh, as these things tend to do, I wanted to tell you. I wanted to tell you what it was like. So that's what we're going to do. If you were there, say hello. Uh, let us know your experiences. Uh, but yeah, for the next half hour or so, we're going to talk ADE. So firstly, what is this thing that we're talking about? Well, every year in Amsterdam, which is a great city, of course, to have anything in, there's a show that it started off with the Dutch version of the music rights organizations, right? You know, every country's got one of these that collects royalties and makes sure they get to the right people and all that stuff. They started it many, many years ago just to get people together that they work with and so on, DJs and that kind of thing. And it kind of grew and grew and grew. And then the, the clubs and the promoters realized that all the DJs were in the same place and wanted to put shows on with them. So a nighttime scene grew around it. And then the industry started to come and it kind of grew and grew and grew. Now it's one of the most important, biggest dance music events in the world. And it's uh, pretty unmissable. Now, because of COVID, it's not really been happening. Uh, that kind of had a bit of a go last year, but this is the, the proper first year back. So uh, it was a big deal. And the, the great and good from the whole dance music industry, so we're talking DJs, producers, clubbers, hobby DJs, pro DJs, and then the companies that serve them. So the likes of Beatport, software companies, hardware companies, YouTube and TikTok, you know, all the places where DJs hang out, they were all there. And it was a full five-day program of day and night seminars, panels, uh, you know, um, workshops and training, uh, and as I said, clubs and festivals in, at night and so on. So really, it's incredible. And it's something that uh, we had to go to this year. And indeed, we did go to. So I'm just here to chat to you about it. And if you have just joined us and thinking, why is Phil sat in a garden? Uh, I'm sat in my garden, our garden, uh, with a cup of tea. And uh, just a few thoughts I want to share with you about ADE this year, because we're on the half term break uh, and we'll be back in the studio next week in full force. But for now, we're just going to talk about uh, about uh, ADE to get it off my mind. And don't forget labels and bookers and festival bookers, says Mixmaster G, uh, who I was uh, with on the panel that he organised. So thanks for that, Mix Mix Master G. I raised my cup of tea to you. Right, okay, let's talk ADE. So what I've done is kind of think about the things that I came away uh, thinking about um, from the show. So before we just move into those, as always, just want to say a quick hello to a few people. Uh, hello to Terence and Paul. David, who says the audio is great. Robert, who is in the Netherlands. Jonathan, we can hear you. Andy, we can hear you fine. Uh, Reza, we can see and hear you fine. Cool. Michael says all good as well. Mark says hello, everyone. DJ AD Foster. Sounds like an amazing event to be at. Uh, it was a sad year, says David, having to miss ADE while I was in Amsterdam. Uh, so sorry about that, David. Sorry that you missed it. Uh, were there any interesting equipment announcements? We'll talk about some of those in a minute. Um, and uh, does anyone notice that you do your best work in the mornings when your ears are fresh and your mind is clear? Well, if you're at ADE, that ain't going to happen. You don't like my music. Thank you for sharing that. An LP remix in Birmingham, England, uh, and so on. Right, okay, so let's now 
uh, let's now talk about this show. And the things that I came away with, takeaways from the show for you, our audience here at Digital DJ Tips, wherever you're watching, YouTube, Twitch, uh, where else are we currently? Where are we currently live? YouTube, Twitch, Facebook, of course, on our group and our page. So the first thing, I'm going to give you five things that I kind of came away with. First thing was the shortage of DJ and production gear is real and no one is denying it. Literally, I was speaking to manufacturers who were saying we don't have anything or we have one or two things, but nothing that we've launched this year is in stock. We are not scared to tell you. And literally no one is trying to pretend that they're not being affected by this. Uh, that was really, really striking. I was hearing stories like the usual shortage of components to build stuff, but also things like the uh, inability to book shipments onto literally onto ships. Um, so they can't get their gear shipped around the world. And then uh, the price of getting gear shipped around the world has gone up 15 times, someone told me. Um, and then the inability to book air freight, you know, okay, well, we'll try and fly a few few pieces in, not working. So when you see the prices of gear going up, it's because the price of components and the waiting list and what they have to pay to assemble the gear, and then the cost of logistics, even if it's available, delivery, air, freight, sea freight, is, is either um, completely prohibitive or just not happening. So, I mean, it was really striking how real that stuff is. So, yeah, the shortage of gear was something really big that came across. Now, quite ironically, as I'm sure you're going to see when I tell you the second thing I want to share with you from ADE, was I actually saw some, some pretty cool new gear, unbelievably. And one of the things I saw was um, a little box, which we just, we just literally covered it on Digital DJ Tips. I'll try and put a picture on the screen for you. There you go. There's a picture I took of this little box. It's an audio interface for DJs. So if you've seen like Evermix or the the little roll and go mixes or the iRig uh, stream or the iRig studio, this thing's called Howler and it's pretty similar to that. Now, the cool thing about this thing, there's a few things about this that I thought were really, really cool. The first thing is it's got a through. So you can plug your gear in, even if you've only got one output on your DJ controller, and then you can plug your speakers in on the other end. So it still works, but then it gives you the ability to plug it into your phone or your tablet or your laptop and use it as an audio interface to get the audio in so that you can then live stream it or record it. So that's pretty cool. It also has a SD card slot, so you can plug an SD card in and record straight to the unit, no need to plug it into anything else. It's got a 30 hour battery built in, which is really cool. And it's just a nice little device. Now, it's currently on Kickstarter. or just about to go live on Kickstarter. It's called Howler. And it's going to be like $99 for people, 99 euros for people who sign up to their Kickstarter. It looks really, really cool. It's about the size of those little Evermix boxes, a bit wider, but a bit shallower. Um, yeah, I really, really liked it. A nice little audio interface for DJs. That's one piece of gear I saw. Another piece of gear I saw, which I can't talk about, but it was very, very cool, was um, a piece of standalone DJ hardware. Uh, sorry, standalone production. I did see a piece of standalone DJ hardware I can't talk about as well, actually, thinking about it. Um, another thing I can tell you is that motorized platters are definitely the flavor of the month. And I can't tell you anything else, but keep your eyes peeled. Uh, but I saw some really interesting standalone production gear. This is like not needing to have a laptop with you. While I was producing with a laptop is great. We've got courses teaching it. Um, but yeah, there's some, some interesting stuff coming out that means that you don't have to use your laptop if you don't want to. I want to say a big hello to our tutors, Layback Luke and James Hype, who are both in Amsterdam. We didn't get a chance to do anything with them this time around, but uh, mainly because James was in and out doing an incredible live set, which you'll see in your Tuesday tips newsletter today by the way do click on that it was awesome um and luke's just had a baby so congratulations luke he was on paternity leave even though he was in amsterdam so hi to our to our crew who were there with me um so yeah there's some cool new hardware as well uh right so what else can i tell you about there was some cool new software there really was um and some of the things i want to draw to your attention there was an app for your phone called mixo which is just about to come out of beta um, and go live, which has been a long time in the making. It basically puts your DJ collection on your phone. And it's really cool. So think about it. You you work on your DJ library and you want to listen to it when you're out and about. How do you do it? It's not easy, is it? Because it's on a hard drive somewhere near your laptop or it's on a USB stick somewhere. 
So this app is designed to stick it on your phone. It uses Dropbox to do that. And it's really, really cool. It's like Spotify or Apple Music, same kind of interface, same kind of feel, but it's your DJ music. It's actually a really, really cool app. So hello to Marcus who uh, came up with that app. I actually might have a photo of me and Marcus. There's an incredible museum called, uh, I think it's called We Are House uh, in uh, Amsterdam. Uh, and it is uh, it's our house. I think it's called Our House. That's right. Uh, and um, yeah, I, I went to have a look at this museum because, hey, why wouldn't you? Uh, and who would I bump into there? But Marcus from Mixo. Uh, and uh, here's a picture of Marcus and myself uh, underneath the Music is the Answer banner in the Our House uh, Museum. Uh, so, uh, so, yeah, good fun. Right. OK, so, yeah, another piece of software I saw was a piece of software called DJ Studio. Now, this, if anyone remembers, anyone remember Mixmeister? Give us some uh, chat if you if you remember the Mixmeister app. Um, it was basically a way of automating your DJ mixes. So you could drag your tracks in and automate the transitions. And basically, you could do a DJ mix in less than the time it took to actually play the records. So this made it really good for like preparing. Um, if you have to do a mix a day for, you know, gyms or for radio stations or just, hey, you like to quickly prepare your tunes and have a mix that you can listen to out and about. Uh, the idea that you have to play all those records from beginning to end kind of sounds a bit archaic when you think about it. So there was an app called Mixmeister, which was good, but it hasn't been updated in 10 years. So a independent software developer took it upon himself to make Mixmeister 2022. And it looked really, really cool. Loads of cool features on it. And one thing I really liked was the ability to uh, check the tunes ahead of time on YouTube and see if they were... Uh, going to get you banned when you uploaded your mix to YouTube. And it can also work with video and really, really cool app. So that's called DJ Studio, and that's coming out soon in public beta. Uh, I've already got a private beta, and I'm really liking the look of that. And another thing I saw was the um, the Beatport party mode. Now, this was really cool. So Beatport has another um, DJ app. This is just like a normal piece of DJ software. It's called Beatport DJ, and it works in your browser. And they've just added something called Beatport party mode beatport dj party mode and it lets you this is quite so cool this you can have up to four djs playing at once on the same dj software it's all in your browser remember access ports library to get the music in you can have up to four djs playing at once and up to 100 people watching it and when the djs are moving the controls you can see um, like an arrow of what they're doing and it has their name written on it it's actually really really cool and uh, I took a picture of um, the presentation there of Beatport uh, DJ that's taken where they were kind of like showing it off. Uh, and it was really good. Enjoyed that. Uh, so that's a good app to try out. Uh, and it's uh, free, but I think you need a Beatport subscription to get more than like 30 seconds of each song into it. I think that's how it works. Uh, but I, I thought that was good as well. So some interesting software. I saw around the edges. By the way, if you just joined us and you thought, what's Phil doing sat in a garden? Uh, this is uh, this is my home. I'm not at the studio this week. It's a uh, half term. It's uh, it's the midterm break here. And so we're taking a break from the studio. Plus, I was at the ADE Amsterdam uh, dance event all last week and uh, I'm taking a break. So uh, I did want to quickly come live on the same slot on a Tuesday just to let you know what I learned at ADE and some kind of takeaway thoughts from it. We've already covered the fact that there's a real shortage of DJ gear. Um, however, there was some cool little bits of hardware around the edges um, and some cool new software. Um, another thing, another big thing that I took away from ADE was how important and how seriously everyone, DJs, record labels, uh, promoters and so on, are taking short form video. So we're talking TikTok, Instagram Reels, YouTube Shorts, the Facebook version, you know, all those vertical videos that are very much DIY and thrown up on the swipe platforms. Uh, they are big. I mean, there were, I probably got a picture of the queue, actually. This was a queue to get into the uh, event at one of the, at the Tobacco Theatre where they were, this was actually TikTok. Uh, explaining how to use TikTok for DJs and musicians. Uh, it was wet, but there was a constant, it was like a guest list queue for a club outside just to get in. Uh, and they had the whole building for at least one whole day. Uh, so look, they were taking it very seriously. TikTok were there, YouTube were there, same thing at the YouTube events. Even if you had a ticket or a pass, 
couldn't necessarily get in. Uh, and it looks like this really is taking off as one of the ways that you have to promote yourself. So if you're not using short form vertical video in your promotion, in your DJing to promote your DJ business or your DJ producer uh, persona or whatever, uh, it's time. You really ought to be getting into it. We'll be covering some more stuff about it on Digital DJ Tips uh, soon when, when I've kind of passed what I learned and we've, we've experimented with some of the things that they were sharing there. Um, so do keep an eye on us for more about that. But yeah, short form video was uh, was really big. And the final thing I want to draw attention to, and it's probably nothing new, but it's just that it's been like two or three years since I've been to any kind of convention at all. Now, these things, I have to tell you, are normally white, middle class, middle aged blokes dressed from head to foot in black jeans and black T-shirts and black shoes, trying not to look quite as overweight as they are. Sorry, but, you know, this is how it is. The diversity thing was really big and it was nice to see. Uh, there was a real and obvious effort to include everyone. Uh, and so, you know, gender, age, sex, ethnicity, there was a real obvious effort to be inclusive. And I liked it because it reminded me of, you know, I remember when I first started um, DJing, it was like no one cared who you were. It was just whether you were into the music. It really struck me. It was almost like a, it just didn't matter um, back in the in the late 80s and the early 90s. And then, you know, you, you, you move forward, say, 10 or 20 years from there and look at some of the YouTube channels that play 24-7 Deep House. And it's all, you know, bros with their muscles and girls with their bums out and all kind of like pretty, pretty backwards stuff, pretty not not i could not the house music i could relate to it kind of changed it kind of gone full circle since the early days and there seems to be a definite swing back to diversity inclusivity everyone if you're into the music that's all that counts uh, and like i say it's probably just the world but hey we haven't been out in the world very much recently uh, but at ade it was massively obvious the efforts that were being taken to include everyone young and old and everything else as well so i love that it's good to see right so that is our five things our five takeaways from ad i'm going to give you before we go today <clears throat> our kind of seven um seven point survival guide for ade and i guess by extension for any kind of thing like this and by the way all this stuff is on the digital dj tips website at the moment so you can see this stuff there um i am not reading from it because we wrote it, so I don't need to. I know what I said. Uh, but you can read about that audio interface, that Howler audio interface there. You can also see the five things we learned ADE there. And the thing I'm about to talk about, seven ways of making the most of ADE. And before we go any further, actually, I've got some very exciting news to share with you. Our brand new DJ course is literally ready. I mean, it's literally ready. Finally, uh, all the descriptions and the music and the handouts have been uploaded to the new platform go away fly uh, all the videos are there they're all finished i've been writing all the descriptions and the instructions for students uh, and it's literally taking shape today yesterday we had like a mammoth sprint to get all that stuff into the platform today i've been writing the emails and the um and the scripts i'll be using to to, to put the information videos together and stuff it's actually launching a week this Thursday. So that's the 3rd of November. Uh, do keep an eye on your inbox for a special subscriber offer. And if for any reason you are not a subscriber of Digital DJ Tips, what are you playing at? Come and subscribe to Digital DJ Tips uh, in order to, uh, to get that opening offer when it happens. It's free to join Digital DJ Tips. And that info is on the screen there for you now. Uh, it's called, didn't tell you what the course was called. I was holding the best bit back. It's the biggest mixing course we've ever made. And it's called Mixing for Mobile and Wedding DJs. There's a huge need for this stuff. Nowadays, all DJs have to mix. It's not enough to turn up, mumble into your microphone and do the same old limited stuff you've always done from track to track. Mobile and Wedding DJs are playing to crowds who were brought up with EDM, who were brought up with big clubs and big festivals and events where the music was mixed and they expect it. They expect it at their weddings. They expect it at their parties and at their corporate events. So there, it's becoming non-optional for DJs to mix. But it's hard when you're a wedding or a mobile or an event DJ because your music is inherently harder to mix than the DJs who traditionally mixed, who play dance music, which has got bits at the beginning and at the end that you can mix in and out of. So we've taken the radio versions, the commercial versions of all the songs DJs use, pop, dance, hip hop, oldies, classics, rock music, 
all the stuff that mobile and wedding DJs play. And you know the songs. You could probably sit down now and name all the songs you hear at that kind of gig. We've taken them all and we have showed how to mix them properly. And so if you are someone who feels you're being left behind by the modern way DJing is done, or you're a DJ that plays house and, you know, more clubby styles and you want to move into mobile mixing, or you're just a DJ after, after a load of new tricks, this is the biggest mixing course we've ever made. It's absolutely packed with really exciting mixes of the kind of music that people will know and therefore they'll know you're doing something cool. Um, we're really excited about it. It's coming next week. Okay, before we move on and do our end, end off today with our seven survival tips for, uh, for uh, festivals and for AD in particular, I just want to uh, say hello to a few more people in the comments who have been very, uh, very patient waiting for their, uh, their chance to say, say their bit. Um, so I'm looking for comments about ADE in particular. Mixmaster G says, uh, yes, indeed, you're right. It was founded by Boomer Stemra in the early 90s. And that is the uh, the royalty distribution platform in the uh, the Netherlands. So thank you for that. DJ AD Foster discovered some new DJs that you hadn't heard about. Mark Roma, for one. So it's a good thing. You know, these, these are not only about the daytime stuff, the seminars and so on. It's about the nighttime stuff as well. A lot of good DJs playing at events like this. Um, but um, you weren't even there. You just caught this online. Well, well done for doing that. That's great to hear. Staying online and following what's going on there. Lots of people asking questions aren't actually about today's topic, which is AD. That's cool. Uh, but uh, we will answer those when we're back in the studio next week. So come and ask them again then. Uh, right. So let's grab... Uh, <laughs> There's a load of people arguing economics and politics in the uh, in the comments. Plenty of channels where you can do that, folk, folks. This ain't the one. Uh, and you're just clogging up my comments, so I can't find the DJ stuff that everyone is here for. Uh, so um, I make more money from Beatport than any platforms. Good on them for making a bit of money for the artists, says you don't like my music. We actually had a great time with Beatport at the show uh, this last week. They're doing some really interesting stuff. Uh, hello to Mark. Nice to see you here, Mark, as ever. Right, so as I promised, I am going to now go and do um, our kind of seven tips for surviving this kind of event. Uh, so here we go, and I'll smash through them. Here they are. I keep my fingers up to make me keep this short, right? Okay, so number one, um, get your hotel booked early. You need a good hotel, and they're not cheap. Book your hotel early. If you book a hotel where you can refund it, then that means that it doesn't matter or not even refund it. Just book it and not pay until a month before. Then that's the way to do it. Uh, get a hotel where you can cancel the reservation, but book it early. They fill up and they get expensive. Uh, number two, get the right kind of ticket. There's all kinds of tickets for ADE. The biggest one is the difference between the Pro Pass and the Lab Pass. I'll put my fingers down, but I will try and be quick. The Pro Pass is the kind of all-in pass. It costs hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, but it gets you into everything, all the stuff that the Lab Pass gets you into, I'm about to tell you about, and all the stuff that's aimed at the pro end of the DJ uh, and music industry as well. And it gets you into all the nighttime events, all the kind of like big, from the biggest, like Eric Prids and stuff this year in the arenas, all the way down to the more underground stuff. Gets you into everything. It's like your all-inclusive pass. Um, but it's expensive. If you get paid in this industry that's the one for you because it's a it's a it's basically a, um, an investment in your djing or your dj music making or whatever um, the, the other kind of pass is the lab pass now this is more for hobby djs hobby producers it gets you into where all the gear is all the interesting equipment and software and the people who make that stuff and it also gets you into lots of talks that are aimed at creators that are aimed at the talent right um, but not aimed at the industry. That's the pro pass. Um, it's much, much, much cheaper. It's like sixty dollars, sixty euros, I think. Uh, but you then have to pick and choose the events that you want to go to in the evenings, and you have to pay for them separately. So you've got to get your pass right. Choose which one you're going to go for, which ticket you're going to go for. Third tip: plan carefully. ADE is not in one place. It's spread out all around the city in dozens of venues, and it's a bit like LA. There's no centre to ADE just like there's no centre to LA. Uh, and sometimes it can feel just as hard to get around because you're on foot in a big city, uh, although you can rent a bike. 
um, which Mixmaster G, who is a regular um, at ADE and a resident of Amsterdam, pointed out underneath uh, one of our articles today. So good point. You can hire a bike. Anyway, I walked. I think most people walk around. The point is you've got a plan. They publish the program. You can take the program and you can decide where you want to go, what seminars, what workshops, what talks, what expo events and so on you want to go to and what nighttime events and get it all planned in and say, mm, can I do that if I do that? And look at the distances between the venues uh, because otherwise you're gonna, it's all going to fall apart. Uh, point four, prioritise networking. Look, you're in the same place as all these people and not only prioritise actual formal networking, they call it, they've, they've been calling them mixes this year. It wasn't networking events, it was mixers. Come to our mixer. But prioritise that stuff because where else are you going to get to see people from every single part of this industry, the top to the bottom, the companies, the creative people, the talent. Um, I had some wonderful meetings and some wonderful chats with people I just would never have got to meet anywhere else. Uh, and it's really important. But also the people you bump into from place to place, the number of meetings I wasn't expecting, people just came up and said, Phil, how's it going? And you know, we, we reconnected was just as important as the stuff that was planned. So prioritize networking, everything else you can probably do from home any time of the year. But the face to face stuff that is special. Um, number five, cut yourself some slack. It doesn't matter how well you plan something like ADE. It's going to go wrong. It's going to rain like that picture I showed you. And then you can't get into the venue because everyone's dived in to get out of the rain uh, and they're not leaving their seats. So even though your ticket or your pass says I'm allowed in here, you won't get in. Um, things will get cancelled, things will get bumped or pushed, and then they'll overlap into other things you wanted to do. Meetings that you planned, people won't turn up. You won't turn up for meetings you planned. Uh, I, you know, I always say when I'm going to these events, there's always one thing I mess up. This year, it was a keynote by um, by the Beatport industry people. I got the day wrong. Just put it in my diary on the wrong day, and I turned up. I was like, what's going on? Where, where is everyone? Um, it happens. So cut yourself some slack. Look, if you can do 80% of the stuff you say you want to do, you're doing well. It's a five day event. You're going out at night. You're getting up in the morning to carry on again on day four or day five. You're not going to be all there in the head, however careful you've been. So just cut yourself some slack. Um, point six, follow up, follow up with everyone you meet. Uh, I always like to have a list of things in my head for making the most of anyone I meet. And the way I do it is I think of something that I've done this year that I'm proud of. Hey, hello. How are you? Um, what's going on with Digital DJ Tips? Oh, let me tell you about the course we made with Jazzy Jeff or whatever, right? So I have something I want to talk about that I've done this year. I have something I'm doing right now that I might need help with uh, and something that I'm planning on doing next year. Again, you might need help with this stuff. So it's always worth mentioning these things. So have your list of things to talk about, but then follow up with people. If someone says, oh, I can help you with that. I know someone who can, you know, or whatever. Uh, and also if people uh, ask you and you say you're going to help them with something, Follow up with them as well. Don't wait for them to follow up with you. If you're one of these people that scribbles all this stuff down and I just use my phone um, and then when you get back in the week or two that follow, just work through them all one or two a day, getting back in touch with people, connecting. Uh, you will find that the, the new friendships stick, the old ones stay alive and the stuff that you've planned or that you promised to people get happens uh, and you'll be in the minority because most people just like when you're on holiday and you think, oh, I love the food here. I'll go and cook that food when I get home. And you never do. Of course you don't. Uh, or, oh, we met some great people in the hotel when we were away. We'll get in touch with them when we get back. And you never do. Do it. Follow up. This is your p passion. This is your hobby. This isn't just people you've met on holiday. Um, so follow up. And my final point, my final tip for ADE, which is what we've been talking about today, is Enjoy the city too. You're in Amsterdam. You're in a fantastic city. It's incredible. It's the Venice of the North. It's got the canals and the shopping and the architecture and the culture and the uh, the, the parks and the, the, the lot. It's all there. So try and get out and enjoy the city a bit as well and kind of round your experience off. It'd be such a shame to be there and, you know, see the inside of a hotel room, the inside of a club and the inside of a few venues and never see anything else. And luckily, just because you're walking around on foot, you do get to see that stuff. But hey, jump on a boat trip. As Mixmaster G says, hire a bike. Uh, if you're someone who likes to go for a run, go for a run in the parks. That's what I was doing in the morning. Uh, get to see a bit more of the city. It's definitely worth it. Right, people. I'm in my garden today, as you can tell. That's because we are on our half-term break here at Digital DJ Tips. Uh, but we haven't done any of our live shows last week. 
because we were ADE. And we're not really doing them this week because it's, it's midterm. Uh, I did think, though, that I wanted to come and do a kind of impromptu Tuesday Tips Live, live from Phil's Garden, uh, because I wanted to share all this info from ADE and my kind of thoughts on making the most of it. You should come next year if you're in Europe. Uh, I saw people from Miami. I saw uh, people from South America. There really were people from all over the place there. Uh, so, um, you know, people do come from further afield as well. Uh, right, I'm going to uh, keep a scan on these comments coming in here. Uh, and I want to uh, pull this one in. Yes, this is true, actually. Uh, there really was a lot of stuff like 3D projection. The Eric Prids show, which was huge, had the most incredible 3, 3D projections going on, um, which were like something else. It's unbelievable. So, yeah, 3D, uh, 3D <laughs> D projection seems to be the thing. You don't like my music, said, ouch, Phil, that hit home. Was this my comment about uh, middle-aged, slightly overweight uh, white men dressed in black? <laughs> Possibly. Um so uh, this is from uh, DJ A.D. Foster. My, my issue with short form videos is that the time it takes to make the content with good production values isn't worth it. Also, the algorithm to get seen. It's not about production values, short form video. It's about uh, getting the content made fast and then moving on to the next thing. Uh, one of the things I learned about it was batch make it. So in other words, if you've got... Uh, I mean, we're a DJ company, right? So we make DJ training. Let's say I look at a new piece of DJ training we've got and I say, what are the 10 things that this teaches? Write them all down. How can I say that in 20 seconds? How can I say that one in 20 seconds? Or that one, or that one, or that one? How can I say it a different way? How can I say it a different way? And you end up with 100 ways of saying 10 things or 50 ways of saying 10 things. Scribble them down on a bit of paper, pin them in front of your camera, turn the camera on and record them. Pause, record another one, play, pause, record another one, play, pause. And then give you 100 pieces of content to whoever puts them live for you in our case, or if it's you that does it, park them all on a drive somewhere. And then you can post them very, very quickly, one a day or two a day or two a week or whatever you want to do. But short form content is not about production values. It's about getting information out there quickly, because frankly, it's short. Um, so that's one thing, you know, that's always been my block. I like to have a beginning, a middle and an end and a script and all that stuff. But it ain't about that. Uh, so uh, Matt says, I honestly can't take any more social platforms to promote on. Uh, and I use Facebook and Instagram and I swear less than 8% of my followers, even though uh, I, I swear less than 8% of my, I swear less than 8% of my followers, 92% of my followers swear more than I do. No, that isn't what is being said by Matt here at all. Uh, Matt says, I swear less than 8% of my followers even see my posts due to the algorithms. How do you break that barrier? You pay, unfortunately. Uh, I've got a joke for you that I read today on LinkedIn. This is a classic LinkedIn star joke. And the joke goes like this. Uh, I posted a joke about organic reach on Facebook today, but no one got it. Yeah. You still thinking? That's a penny dropped on that one. Uh, I like that joke. I thought that was funny. Uh, but yes, it is hard to get your organic posts to get very far uh, on the networks. Anyway, we won't go down this route too much. I will be covering this further uh, soon. Uh, right. So I'm just checking if there's any more comments on here that I want to quickly throw on the screen. But I think we've probably done enough. Uh, tips on getting your pro pass. It's cheaper if you get it early. That's very, very true. And um, yeah, I think we're probably done here, people. Thank you very much for commenting. Thank you very much for taking part. I do uh, acknowledge that if I triggered all the political stuff by talking about inclusivity, well, tough. I don't think it's political anymore. It's just plain good manners. Uh, and thank you very much to everyone for joining in. We will be back next week. Uh, oh, a little story from DJ Fane to end off with. DJ Fane says, I was playing uh, 2018 at ADE. I recommend everyone to join. I met a lot of friends from the industry and I enjoy non uh, and enjoy electronic music sets around great venues. So that's a good way to end. Listen, today, people, we've talked about ADE. We've talked about the five things that I took away from it and seven survival tips. It's all on Digital DJ Tips at the moment. If you go to digitaldjtips.com and look on the website, you will find the articles that go into detail about what I've just been talking about, as well as some of the hardware and software I've been talking about. Just remember as well, a week on Thursday, our new course, Mixing for Mobile and Wedding DJs, drops. It's a big deal. So keep...
keep an eye out for that. I'm here on Thursday for Thursday Q&A Live because it's our midterm break here, but I'm back in the studio next week in force on Tuesday and Thursday, 3 p.m. London, 10 a.m. Eastern. Until then, people, get good. Where's the camera? Get good. Get out there. Make the moments. And I'll see you again soon.